Happy Monday, everybody. My name is Brandon Rosa, and welcome to another episode of the Xbox in 10 podcast, your weekly source of Xbox gaming news covered in around 10 minutes. Every Monday, this podcast covers new game releases, the previous week's gaming news, and we all earn an Xbox-related fun fact together. This show is on podcast services around the world, so please subscribe on your favorite and leave a review. Xbox in 10.com, no numbers, is your quick source for links to all of our podcast destinations and social media profiles, which you can follow at Xbox in 10. To start, let's talk game releases. The games coming out this week include Hunt Down, Deep Rock Galactic, Super Mega Baseball 3, Patata Fairy Flower, Samurai Showdown DLC character Iroha, and Ion Fury. Games coming soon to Xbox Game Pass for console include Daisy on May 7th, Red Dead Redemption 2 on May 7th, Final Fantasy IX on May 14th, and Fractured Minds on May 19th. Now onto last week's biggest news stories and we have 9 to cover this week. Number 1, Inside Xbox May 2020 episode recap by Will Tuttle on Xbox Wire. Everyone here at Xbox is excited to share more about the games and experiences coming in the next generation. Earlier this week, we shared our plans for Xbox 2020, our new reoccurring series that will be rolling out over the course of the year. We kicked it off today with an episode of Inside Xbox that included a very special first look at Xbox Series X gameplay event, which highlighted 13 new titles coming to Xbox Series X in the launch window from a variety of our development partners from across the globe. Many of these titles are brand new properties that are being shown for the very first time, kicking off the new generation in a very exciting way. We've always made a point to showcase great work from developers large and small from around the world, and this is just the beginning. Hundreds of titles are already in development for Xbox Series X thanks to our amazing partner community. We'll be sharing a lot more in the coming months in our Xbox 2020 series, not only from those partners, but from Xbox Game Studios as well. We're also happy to share that all the games included in today's show will be Xbox Series X optimized, meaning they are built to take advantage of the powerful Xbox Series X features that make games look and feel incredible, including 4K resolution at up to 120 frames per second, direct storage, hardware accelerated direct X-ray tracing, super fast load times, and much more. Putting the power of the console in the hands of the developers to decide what's best for their games is one of our core beliefs, and we are excited for the first look at how they are choosing to leverage the Xbox Series X. We also probably note that some of the titles below have asterisks next to their names. This means that these games are confirmed to take advantage of smart delivery, ensuring you only have to buy the game once knowing you'll get the best version of that game for whichever Xbox console you're playing on. Today we confirmed 9 more titles leveraging this tech for a great customer experience, adding to the likes of Cyberpunk 2077 and all Xbox Game Studios titles. So I do recommend that everyone go read the full article on Xbox Wire or watch the VOD on demand. Now I was a bit disappointed in this showing, and only for the fact that they drove home gameplay so hard. There really wasn't gameplay in any of these trailers, there was a few seconds here and there, but largely they were in-game, in-engine cutscenes. So it seemed a little disingenuous from how they were promoting it, but it was good to see that Aaron Greenberg on Twitter commented back to a fan that they understand the feedback that everyone was giving them, and they'll learn from it in the future. Good on Xbox, self-reflection is great, and here's to more Xbox Series X games to show in the future. Number 2. Xbox 2020 announced monthly updates on Series X, new games, and more. Joe Scrabbles at IGN writes, Xbox has announced Xbox 2020, a program of monthly updates on the future of Xbox beginning with this week's Inside Xbox broadcast. The July episode will focus on looking at first-party Xbox Series X games from Xbox Game Studios. Xbox will also be joining IGN's Summer of Gaming Showcase in June. Jarrett West, CVP of Gaming Marketing at Xbox, explained the format. Quote, starting with the May 7th episode of Inside Xbox, we'll be showcasing what happens next in the world of Xbox every month, which is why we're calling it Xbox 2020. These monthly moments will take place throughout the rest of the year, and will be a way for us to engage, connect, and celebrate with you about what's in store for the next generation of gaming, including what's next for Xbox Series X, Xbox Game Studios, Xbox Game Pass, and Project X Cloud. Every month will bring something different. Stay tuned to Xbox Wire for more details. Really exciting to see that every month we have something to look forward to leading up to launch. I hope they stick the landing, we find out more about the console in June where their E3 event would have been, and we get to see all the first party games in action in July. Cannot wait. Number 3. Xbox Series X optimized games promise 4K up to 120 frames per second, ray tracing, and fast load times. Tom Warren at The Verge writes, Microsoft is revealing a new optimized for Xbox Series X badge today designed to show which games will run best on the next-gen console. Optimized games will take advantage of Xbox Series X features like 4K resolution at up to 120 frames per second, direct storage, hardware accelerated ray tracing, and faster load times. The optimized badge means titles will have been tweaked in some way by developers for the new console. Developers are using the power of the Xbox Series X to optimize their games the way they want, explains Damon Baker, head of global portfolio at Xbox. Higher resolutions, crazy frame rates, ray tracing, and yes, faster in-game load times. 
game developers will now be able to optimize their games for the new Xbox Series X console with higher frame rates up to 120 frames per second. That's something we'll now likely see more broadly thanks to the improved 12 teraflop GPU in the Xbox Series X. There's also a big push for ray tracing in games here, a technique that's typically used to generate real-time lighting reflections and cinematic effects. While 4K support is part of the optimized badge, it's not clear if this definition will be limited to 4K native or include checkerboarding and dynamic resolution techniques. We asked Microsoft about this, but the company didn't clarify. Quote, games optimized for Xbox Series X will showcase unparalleled load time, visuals, responsiveness, and frame rates up to 120 frames per second. However, it will be up to individual developers to determine how they leverage the power and speed of Xbox Series X, including which next-gen technologies they leverage and implement in their games, and quote, says a Microsoft spokesperson. Everyone's going to want to check out this cool little green logo that we'll see for all games upcoming on the Xbox Next Generation. More validation for our purchases as we make them for our new console. Number 4. Xbox Series X Feature 60 FPS Standard Output Confirms Xbox's Aaron Greenberg. Asher Menden at Windows Central writes, The Xbox Series X games reveal is only a few hours away, but it seems like Microsoft has already confirmed one of the most important features of the device. Today, Xbox's Aaron Greenberg said that 60 frames per second will be the standard output, but the architecture allows us to support up to 120 frames per second. Many games were worried that we'd still see 30 frames per second games, but that doesn't appear to be the case. From what we know, it seems like all games will run at 60 FPS on the console, but some like Ori and the Will of the Wisps can be pushed to 120 frames per second. It is unclear if this is going to be 1080p 120 frames per second or 4K 120 frames per second. We'll keep you posted as soon as we know more, until then rejoice at the fact that the 60 FPS appears to be the standard going forward. This should result in not only smoother visuals, but also tighter controls because increasing the frame rate reduces input lag. This needs to be the standard going forward, and it's great to see Aaron Greenberg all but confirming that. Trying to play Destiny on console at 30 frames per second is quite unbearable when you compare it to the PC. Shout out to my friend Kevin for belaboring that point for many, many years. Number 5, Halo 2 Anniversary arrives on PC May 12th. Taylor Lyles at The Verge writes, Microsoft is bringing Halo 2 Anniversary to Windows 10 PCs on May 12th as part of the Halo The Master Chief Collection the company announced today. Halo 2 Anniversary is an HD remastered version of Halo 2, which came out on the original Xbox in 2004. It includes a major overhaul to the game's visuals in addition to the soundtrack and sound effects. Halo 2 Anniversary also allows users to switch back and forth from the original graphics to the updated visuals and the campaign mode. Halo 2 Anniversary originally came out as part of the Halo The Master Chief Collection on Xbox One in 2014. The compilation also featured Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary, Halo 3, Halo 3 ODST Campaign, and Halo 4. Microsoft would later release release Halo Reach into the compilation roughly five years after its initial release. The PC port of Halo The Master Chief Collection launched in 2019, though it only included Halo Reach at launch. Combat Evolved Anniversary has since been added, and Microsoft plans to add the rest of the games over the course of 2020. Rejoice PC gamers, you finally get to play Halo 2 Anniversary on all your modern rigs. Number 6. Destiny 2 will come to PS5 and Xbox Series X. Stephanie Nunnally at VG247 writes, Bungie confirmed today that it will release Destiny 2 on PS5 and Xbox Series X. A date or details weren't provided, but the developer said it will release more details soon. It's possible that the game will make use of Xbox Series X's smart delivery feature, which ensures that if you buy one version of the game, you'll be able to play it both on Xbox One and Xbox Series X. We won't know though until Bungie provides more information. Really hope that they take advantage of the smart delivery system as the Destiny 2 console player. It will be interesting to see though what happens with Destiny 2 and the expansion that I assume will be coming out this fall in addition to the console launches. Number 7. Next Premium Call of Duty still scheduled for 2020 release. Matt Kim at IGN writes, Like many other businesses and employees and game developers at Activision Blizzard have transitioned to working from home. However, that hasn't stopped Activision from confirming that the next premium Call of Duty is on track to release later this year. Activision Blizzard's new Chief Operating Officer and President Daniel Allegri spoke with investors today at Share Activision's Q1 2020 results. Despite the changes to the workplace caused by the COVID-19 pandemic, Allegri confirmed that the next mainline Call of Duty game is on track for later this year. Allegri said two titles based on library IP from Activision are in development. This means that there are two games not based on Call of Duty in development. This could potentially mean games like Crash Bandicoot or Spyro. Activision did not confirm what these titles are, so there's space for speculation. It's going to be interesting to see how this year's Call of Duty turns out, with the huge success of Call of Duty Modern Warfare and Call of Duty Warzone, and the fact that Treyarch is releasing this year's title on a two-year dev cycle even though all the studios have now been used to three years, impacted also by the COVID-19 pandemic and how their workflow is now operating. Number 8. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order gets a free update that's predicated 
on challenges and new game plus. Chris Carter at Destructoid writes, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order has remained strangely dormant since its mid-November 2019 launch as EA didn't manage to figure out a way to stuff in microtransactions or multiple bits of paid micro DLC into it. Instead, the team over at Respawn Entertainment worked on optimizing the game's many bugs for the past six months or so, and just now the developer is ready to debut new content. Just in time for May 4th, the made-up Star Wars marketing holiday, Fallen Order is hosting a free update on all platforms that's pretty substantial. The update is multifaceted, focusing on new challenges featuring old areas and enemies, a new game plus mode that lets you replay the game with unlocked cosmetics, so like half plus, plus a new meditation-based create a challenge mode and a dark side inquisitor outfit. It's not drastically different, but is free and coming all at once rather than being teased in an annoying fashion over the course of weeks as pieces of free DLC. I played Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order and really liked it at launch. It did have a lot of bugs which was disappointing as it seems like they rushed it out for the holiday and movie release, but great on them for adding a bunch of free new fun DLC. And number 9, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, start of new franchise EA confirms. Matt Kim at IGN writes, EA CEO Andrew Wilson confirmed that Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order will be the start of a new franchise suggesting more games including a Jedi Fallen Order 2 are being planned. During an earnings call, EA CEO Andrew Wilson said that Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order is the first title in an entirely new franchise. This is the first official confirmation that Jedi Fallen Order is in a one-off adventure. This isn't too surprising considering the success Jedi Fallen Order experienced critically and financially since its release. During an investor call last year, CFO Blake Jurgensen said that Jedi Fallen Order significantly beat our expectations and was expected to sell 10 million units. Respawn has also put up job listings in recent months, specifically looking to fill up senior positions on the Star Wars team. A hint that Respawn was working on more Star Wars content. Given this, it's not too surprising that EA is pursuing potential sequels for such a successful title. I love Respawn, I enjoy Jedi Fallen Order, I can't wait to see what they do with the sequel, I just hope they take their time on it. As always, we end our show with a fun fact about Xbox, and this is just a little bit of history on Gears of War. Credit to Fandom.com. Gears of War is an award-winning, best-selling science fiction video game franchise created by Epic Games, currently developed by The Coalition, owned and published by Xbox Game Studios, previously known as Microsoft Game Studios. The trilogy, prequel, and two sequels that currently make up the series take place on the planet Sera and focus on a war between humans and creatures known as the Locust Horde. Thank you all for listening to another episode of the Xbox and 10 podcast, your weekly source of Xbox gaming news covered in around 10 minutes. If you like the show, please subscribe on your favorite podcast service, leave a review, share it with your friends, and follow on all social media at Xbox and 10. This past week, I haven't played too much video games as I've been watching a lot of Star Wars Rebels, playing a lot of the best board game of all time in Pandemic, and I did play a couple of Call of Duty Warzone matches on PC and Xbox. My name is Brandon Rosie. You can follow me on Xbox at Brosen93. I hope you all have a great week. Please stay safe and keep on gaming.